when you are charged with something serious and then you get your defense attorney on board, I know that everybody in the family, everybody ramps up and it's like, we need things to happen and happen fast. And that is great. And I hope it does. And I want to let you know that sometimes you have to be careful on how you time things and how patient you need to be under certain circumstances given the judge that you're dealing with. And I learned this lesson back in 93. I started as a public defender and I was assigned to Judge Richard Conrad's felony courtroom and Judge Conrad, rest in peace, was a great judge, but he had his quirks that I did not know about. And I needed this guy out of jail and I needed this guy out of jail fast. And I filed this motion to set bond and I'm waiting for a hearing and I'm waiting, I'm waiting for a decision. Finally, I decided to show up at his office and Alice, his uh, wonderful trusty assistant was there. And I'm asking Alice, I'm like, Alice, this thing hasn't been set. The judge hasn't ruled on it. When am I going to hear something? Well, the judge was in the office. He heard it. He came out. He goes, hey, John. I'm like, hey, judge. And he goes, hey, Alice, why don't you, you give me that file that John's talking about? And I'm like, I'm kind of excited. I'm like, cool. He gets a pen, gets the order. He writes in big letters, do, denied, right? Here you go, John. Motion denied. We'll see you in court later. Big lesson for me is that that is not the way that you handle Judge Conrad. You do not pester Alice and wonder when you're going to get hearing time. You don't pester the judge to wonder if there's been a ruling. That's not how he works. And I learned a lesson that day and I behaved appropriately from there forward and got my way from there forward once I understood how Judge Conrad worked. Now, there are other judges in Orange County like Andy Cameron, for example. Andy was a great defense attorney before he became a judge. And Andy was one of these defense attorneys that filed a lot of motions and knows the law well even before he became a judge. And now when you practice in front of him, I think he's taken that to the bench. And what I mean by that is he's like, hey, let me hear these motions. Let me come on into court. Let's argue this. I'll referee this. Really kind of the opposite of Judge Conrad, quite frankly. But if you know how Andy Cameron works, you could tell your client, hey, yeah, we're going to get this heard quickly. Hey, yeah, we've got a fair judge on this, et cetera, et cetera. Versus if you knew you had Judge Conrad on it, you're going to be like, well, he might let you out, but he's going to make you sit. And if we keep asking, if you're writing letters to this judge, I'm not going to be able to get your loved one out. It's not going to happen. So we have to take a different approach to a Judge Conrad judge. It's like you folks out there that, like me, I've killed a lot of cactus in my day, right? I want to water plants like almost every other day. Well, if you water your cactus like I have every other day, you're going to kill that plant. That cactus only needs to be watered once every four weeks. So once you understand how prickly some of these judges can be, you have to understand how you're going to water this case and make it grow, and make things go in your direction. The question you're going to have to ask defense attorney if you want to hire them on the case is pretty simple. Have you practiced in front of this judge? Do you know how this judge works? And if they do, you might want to hire them. And if they're from four hours away and just want to take your money and drive in four hours and practice in front of a judge they've never heard of, I might say, I'm, I'm going to call somebody else. That's all I'm saying.